All right, we are recording. Okay then. So, Thor, son of Asgard, for iPhone, iPad, and iPad 2. Trouble is brewing among the nine worlds. Uncover the mystery behind Sif's unusual behavior, Loki's strange change of heart, and a conspiracy to end the sovereignty of the Odin sons. Wield Thor's mighty hammer and lay waste to hordes of dark elves, frost giants, and trolls, taking in the panoramic scenery of the many realms of Asgard. Witness a story written by actual Marvel comic book writers brought to life with cutscenes straight from the comic book artists at Marvel. Okay, now that we have the tagline out of the way, some of the good things about this game. The story and cutscenes are actually done by Marvel writers and artists. The game is paced well. There are lots of unlockables for fans. Some of the bad things about this game? Hey, <sighs> Boring plus repetitive equals the gameplay. And your camera is less than friendly. And the hit detection is pretty bad. One big WTF moment that I noticed in this game. Why, oh why, oh why, oh why, oh why does Odin fall into those Odin sleeps, thus leaving Thor being the only one who can look after the the, the deal? It makes no sense. Oh well. Ugh. All right. So in case you haven't, in case you didn't notice from my last comment I am not much of a comic book fan mainly because I never did get into them therefore when Marvel created the story and did the comic book style cutscenes for this game which which are really nice I had some hope that the game would be a decent game and that it would suck me into Thor's world and it would inspire me to look more into Thor's character and story I still haven't seen the movie yet I am planning to change that Oh, man. Boy, was I wrong about that. Okay, now before I get with my problems with this game, let me, let me, let me, let me talk about... Uh, let, me talk, let me elaborate more about the good things about this game. Yes, the storyline is created by actual Marvel writers and artists, and the cutscenes are made in that comic book art style. And it will bring shivers of... I'm sure it'll bring shivers of nerdy, nostalgic joy to fans of the comic books. It isn't the original Jack Kirby, but from my perspective as a quote-unquote newbie, it looks great. And the story is interesting, with voiceovers that, while cheesy, do not break the illusion that you are in the middle of an actual Thor comic book. It looked awesome to me. And also, as I played through this game... I always did have a challenge in front of me. Never did I have a moment where I wasn't doing something to progress the story. And the level design was quite panoramic. The levels are huge, and chances are if you see a place far off in the distance, you'll probably end up going there. It's not always the case, but it does make your journey through the game interesting on a visual level. And thus we come to the part of the game that is rough, shoddy, shoddy plus that S word, and it is a real game killer. The gameplay. I beat the game by almost exclusively using one combo. And that was on the normal difficulty. There were a few other times where I needed to dodge, but I otherwise felt like I never needed to do anything else but use a particular combo. It made the entire game feel like one boring grind through waves of enemies whose only tactic was to gank you up close or snipe you to death. Factor in that Thor doesn't give off any sort of cue once he gets hit by an arrow, and you do have a recipe for frustration at certain points of the game. Yeah. <sighs> well, let's talk about the controls. The controls are pretty basic. You got a button for your basic melee, you got a button for your hammer and lightning attacks, and you have a third button for your blocks and dodges. You move using a virtual joystick, and... And there is no way to control the camera. Uh, none that I found. So that's disappointing. Problems do start to arise with the implementation of these controls um, that I hinted at um, two seconds ago. 
<laughs> well, okay. While the basic melee works fine and it is responsive, the developers felt some perverse need to add finishing animations for Thor's final blow on an opponent. This is fine when you're tackling a single foe, but when you're in the middle of a group, it means more time killing off an enemy, more time for those other enemies around you to hit you, and less time for you to attack the other enemies. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't add up. Ugh. And also, and so, um, the hammer lightning button, that's for throwing Thor's hammer. Like, uh, pretty much like a boomerang. Just <laughs> Kind of like the chain part, uh, the the chain pipe from the from that mystical ninja game for the for the Nintendo 64. And um, when you do fire, uh, when you do throw your hammer, you can cast lightning on the target you hit, if it's not too if if it's not too large, which is pretty much an instant kill attack. Unfortunately, the instant kill attack is not that instant. Again, the animation is played out, which is very bad when you're in the middle of a group of enemies. And it basically means you're probably going to die. In conclusion, the only useful combo, the only useful attack chain you have is this. Melee, melee, hammer lightning, hammer lightning. This knocks the enemies around you flat on their back and hits every enemy on screen with a small lightning bolt. This was the combo that got me through the entire game. Ish. This button mashy and broken nature of the gameplay drags down the experience to the point where many of the later levels will feel like one massive drag that you have to slog through to progress the story. I guess it didn't help that I did not know how to unleash the special attacks until the final boss. You see, as you perform melee attacks, a blue bar fills up underneath your health bar. Once this is full, you can unleash a special attack by tapping and holding the hammer lightning button and swiping up or down on the screen. The final boss requires one of these specials to beat, uh, to beat, to beat that boss. <sighs> oh my god, I wasted over a half an hour meleeing the mobs the final boss threw at me before being fed up, going to the help section, and seeing the truth about the special attacks. <sighs> I was this close to. I was this close to losing my temper. The music, on the other hand, is surprisingly decent, giving off more of an epic movie feel than I expected. It did help alleviate the grind of certain sections due to how epic it sounded, complete with epic choir. While I did mention that there are no visual or audio cues when Thor gets hit by an arrow, or any other projectile for that matter, um, every other attack that Thor, that Thor performs does sound authentic, relatively. The hammer makes a passable thwack, the lightning sounds like it should, and Thor does spout off some one-liners that you know, will, will cause... Will, especially if you've seen Thor from the comic books, I think it'll, it'll give you a little bit of a smile. <laughs> Yeah, and so then let's get to the graphics. The graphics, other than the cutscenes, do look good, considering what the iOS devices are capable of. It is a step up from certain uh, games that use 3D character models. Um, uh, one example being Rhymeland's Hammer of Thor. Yes, Hammer of Thor, the name is just a coincidence that has nothing to do with the actual comic book. Yet it is not the pinnacle of what is possible on this platform. Infinity Blade takes that honor without question. It is disappointing that the game will throw the same enemies at you over and over again though. It causes the gameplay to blur together even more than it already does due to the similarity between the different enemy types. You got your basic melee, you got your ranged, and you got your special enemies. And upgraded versions of each of these types. It is a shame. Because there is some decent, there is some decent graphic design for these character models, and the fact that it all blends together is, I, I guess it is kind of poor gameplay design. Oh well. In conclusion, this game falls squarely into the "so bad it's good" category, 
The gameplay is a button mash fest more fit for a side-scrolling beat up than a 3D action game, which might not be so bad if it wasn't broken in several ways. However, there are good parts to this game, from the comic book style of cutscenes to the pseudo above average audio work, and to the decent aesthetic the game gives off. It does not excuse the crippling problems the gameplay has, however. If you are interested in playing this game, proceed with caution. My rating for this game, 6 out of 10. Above average. You know, the good things about this game are enough that it does make it stand out from the rest of the pack. Unfortunately, it doesn't do much beyond that. Which leads to my recommendation of this game. I recommend this game for fans of Thor only. That's my recommendation because it's you fans that are going to get the most out of this game and you're going to get all the references. You're going to understand all the characters that they give you. Okay. I spent about six and a half hours playing this game to completion. I purchased it and downloaded it over Wi-Fi onto my iPad 2. Oh. Logitech keyboard for the iPad 2. It rocks! Okay, this different subject. Alright. I am signing off.